Government is saying it is stepping up efforts to deal with the menace of illegal mining, but it appears that's a little too late or rather insufficient in terms of convincing organized labor and civil society. What are the specific issues at play here? And that's what we're going to sink our teeth into here on Ghana tonight. And, and, and stay with me because, look, we're going to show you the evidence of why we say that this threat of illegal mining is closer to all of us than we think. You might just be eating something that you may have probably, uh, or you may be at risk of all the attendant threats that comes with the impact of illegal mining. Stay with us here on Ghana tonight. But organized labor has threatened to go on a nationwide strike should the government fail to deal with illegal mining, as in put pragmatic measures in place immediately. The workers want, among other things, a total ban on all activities in the country related to uh, that small-scale mining and the declaration of a state of emergency. They held a press conference earlier today. Take a look. An order to halt to all forms of mining that are legal or illegal in forest reserves and around water bodies. The deployment of the police and the military with full orders, and I want to repeat, with full orders, to remove, destroy all mining equipment and other earth moving equipment around river bodies and in the forest reserves. Establish a special court to persecute the perpetrators of this horrible, heinous crime. Organized labor will urgently embark on a series of demonstrations and a nationwide strike if government fails to address the concerns raised by end of the month, September 2024. This one, we are serious. You cross us, we will roll over you, we will crush you. This Galamse Minas has not got any political color. It's our, ourselves, we the people, we are going to suffer. President sworn an oath to protect our lives and protect all of us. Today, the call is that, President, you must live up to your constitutional obligation, a state of emergency because this is an emergency. They are destroying their head. We are destroying this one. Now look at the other aspect of it. After destroying this one, then we ask the children when they come to school, say so we give them one nutritious meal. Which meal can restore something that mercury has damaged? <laughs> we are giving His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, up to the ending of this month. And believe you me, we are now between life and death. We refuse to die. We refuse to die. And whatever we can do for us and for the children yet unborn, every year, would, the number that I've given you, 880,000 80, of them, we are not only fighting for ourselves, we are fighting for our, uh, 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 our children. But the fight is not just an economic fight, but it's also a social fight to save ourselves for today, and then uh, save the uh, crops that we grow for export, save the crops that we grow for consumption. Well, so th th what we've shown you right now is just a combination of a number of the leaders of the various labor unions, trade, that's the TUC um, Secretary General, Joshua Ansan, you saw him there. Also, uh, the clock sack head, we're talking about Dr. Isaac Bampuado, He's a leader of the forum as well. And Thomas Musatanko, he's the General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers. He's going to be joining us on Zoom in a bit because there's a development to some of the demands that they are making um, of government. For instance, the declaration of the state of emergency. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources has been responding to that at a, at a major engagement uh, earlier this evening. We we'll are getting to that. But let me show you why you should all be concerned about the threats and impact of illegal mining. It's closer to us, it's in our homes, much more than we think. Because you might just be consuming some food that is either prepared with water, contaminated as a result of illegal mining and chemicals, but you do not know about it. We caught up with this um, trader in Buraman, my colleagues in Connect FM in Takrade, spoke to him over the weekend. Take a look. 
in sure where you said the book galam way more tank way more yet alum ten cities at the boom as an enina abbey say we buy alum ten cities and put in the water before it becomes clean we then mix it when preparing our chicken which we sell in brahman here takradi and even in accra alum ten city at your woman sooner and yeah they say as near them say i check it i buy yes no what will come with being neat do that my assassin so in sure we have a fun yes i know don't we have a minimum we are buying we are begging government. There's no proper borehole here. You have allowed Chinese galamsey operators to destroy our water bodies and farmlands. Even water to drink is difficult to find. Why mine our gold and destroy our water bodies in addition? Yes, we are coming here. Here, boy, go turn off for best. Saku me in the flash. I say so. Who better my sister? Do a mass. I say so. And you easy. Who better do? You just pay the paper. Be a young good. I do a I say do your cook. You know, good dear. I buy your straw. You need your mass. You so you better cook. I say do. We share the one cook. And you are your friend. You say you are your. I say so. Well, so that's Buraman. And guess what? She gives you an idea of where the Acheke. I'm sure a number of you like Acheke. Just as I do. It, it, where they are checking goals, the ones they prepare. They sell some in Accra, Chakradi. You might be scratching your head right now thinking about the Acheke you just ate this evening and whether you're at risk of what she's talking about. But that's the reality. They are buying alum, 10 CDs, to purify that, that polluted water before it becomes a little clean for them to be able to use it. That's the reality that we're faced with right now. These are the demands of TUC and some civil society organizations, including the um, likes of the Catholic Bishops' Conference, the Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining. Take a look at this. Declaration of a state of emergency. That's number one. The asking that the president declares a state of emergency. That's how serious the situation is. Abrogation of concessions overlapping river buffers. Abrogation of entry permits allowing access to globally significant biodiversity areas like the Tiwa Forest. Repeal of law allowing mining in forest reserves. Presidential candidates should publicly declare their support, total support for this crisis response. And let's deal with the first one, shall we? The declaration of the state of emergency. There was a question that was put to the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, just some three hours ago when he interacted with some senior journalists and editors. And he had this to say about this demand for the president to, to declare a state of emergency. Take a look. The comments and interventions of TUC, UTAC, professional bodies, unions, journalists, and Ghanaians are not to be dismissed. That's where I think we should begin from. We should listen to them. And those are uh, views that they have. Uh, analyzed and, and put forward and I intend to engage various professional bodies including TUCs and I believe through that we may be able to polish our policy and our approach in dealing with this matter and we will do so now forest reserves small scale mining is not permitted in forest reserves so the question about illegal small scale mining in forest is, I think it is more about having the right mechanism to prevent such illegalities in our forest reserves. The law doesn't permit small scale mining in forest reserves. Declare a state of emergency that is within the bosom of the president, but I find that to be a far reaching, um, really. Uh, you know, a, a very draconian measure to take. And so we will engage them and we will have this conversation. And I believe out of that, we may be able to come up with some consensus which we can, we can work with. So that's the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources there, Samuel Abojanapo, earlier this evening. He makes two emphatic statements. And Musa Tanko, uh, that's uh, Thomas Musa Tanko, is the General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT. He's joining us on Zoom right now. But then you hear the minister also make that emphatic statement that small-scale mining in its forms, various, is not allowed or permitted 
in forest reserves. The Tiwa Forest is a forest reserve. I was in the Tiwa Forest. There's small scale, illegal small scale mining going on there because we met some of these Galamse operators in the heart of that Etiwa forest. That's contrary to what the minister is saying, but take a look at this. This is the champ farm, which crushes the stones. That is being made now. The director of this man, whoever is financing him, should be the target and, and focus of government in the next fight against illegal mining. Who are the real Galamse operators? The financiers of these young men and women in the forest that we arrest. So when we arrest them, then, then what next? Thomas Musatanko, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources has a response for your demand for the president to declare a state of emergency. He says that it's far-reaching and somewhat draconian. That's the initial reaction to this demand that you're making. Mr. Tango. Thank you very much. I think if you look at the article we quoted carefully, it has to do with Article 31. And if you look at the Article 31, Clause 9, that we quoted, or well, that we are making reference to, it fulfills all requirements that the state of emergency should be declared. And I think it's important for us to remind the Honorable Minister for Education that it was not a ministerial seat that was put on the line. It was not an MP seat that was put on the line. It was the Jubilee seat. So when the president was talking, he, the president, His Excellency, Nana Dodanko Akufuado, put his presidency on the line. It was not a ministerial seat. It was not an MP seat. It was the seat of government. That was what was put on the line. And so the issue before us now is a presidential issue. It is not a ministerial issue with the greatest of respect to him. And therefore, we are also taken aback and surprised at his response. And so what we are saying is this. Having looked at Article 31 carefully, all the requirements there have been fulfilled. Look, Alfred, I indicated today that we are talking about 880,000 children that are born every day. What water are they coming to drink? The minister should tell us. What water? Are they coming to drink the river Pra? Are they coming to drink the river uh, the, uh, 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 Biri? Is that what they are coming to drink? Is that what he's talking about? In any case, is he aware that the children that we are talking about, those born between the ages, I'm even talking only about children here. I am not talking about the, the, the environment that we've lost and the kind of the cancers and all, all the challenges that the health talent. I'm not even I'm talking here about the children because I am in education. So I only zero in on education. Look, children between the ages of five to 17 years. We are to 21% of them are into child labor. 21%. And I can tell that. 40% of them are to hazardous labor. So in order to put it in figure tips, or to make it simple, any five children you see, one is into child labor. And the four that have been coming to school, because of the levels of pollution, those four children now, most, most of them are no longer coming to school. They go long distances to go and look for water. And those who also come to school, they are suffering from cancers, among other things. Are we waiting for all of us to die before you know that there is something happening? The Constitution provides clearly that when the, 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 the lives of the people are threatened, and also in the, in the interest of national security, you need to declare a state of emergency. That is what we are talking about. We are talking about the pollution of the water. Look, in any case, 
We are talking about here about school feeding. The question is, the children that have gotten that, uh, the cancers and all that, and those who are having those brain problems, that the, nutri the nutritious meal that the government is providing, can that cure them? Can that cure those challenges? How can we, our account can stay sponsored in responsibility, create problems for children. Then we tell the children that when you come, we'll, we'll give you one nutritious meal. In any case, how can the children then even come to school? Please, my brother Alfred, what we are saying is that this matter is not a ministerial matter. This matter is not an MP matter. It was His Excellency, our own president, Danado Danko Akufado, who put his presidency on the line. And we are saying that the Galamse issue, let me borrow the words of Reverend uh, Lawrence Dette. Let me borrow his words. That this Galamse nonsense thing must stop. And we have given the president up to the end of no, uh, September. Be to me. If September ends and nothing happens, Alfred, I tell you, organized labor will provide appropriate response. And this time, any call that will be given to us will not, will not yield to it. Because we are determined together right. with our wives, together with our children. We will not sit down and die because we are now between death and life. Right. That is the situation now. We are between death and life. But we choose life. And we are going to fight for our lives, the lives of our wives, the lives of our children, and the lives of the children who are yet to be born. That's the 880,000 of them that are born every year. We are fighting for them. I and see. if the, the, state of, the, the state of emergency is not declared by the ending of this particular month, Alfred, I can assure you that in October, organized labor, we will rise to the occasion. Indeed, in rising to the occasion, the clear message you send, and I get the saying that in the next 19 days ahead of us, if, you, if the president does not declare a state of emergency and also announce some pragmatic measures put in place to deal with this, you're going to declare a nationwide strike. You're shutting down government business. TUC, that's what's happening. I can assure you that the text that we have given to it. We shall deliver, we shall deliver every item of it to the letter. We will not miss anything. We will deliver it to the letter. We are resolved and we will we are determined. We are working together with other civil society organizations. That please let nobody take us for granted this time this time round. Let me tell you something. Somebody was asking, why have we waited up to this particular time and we are talking? You see, we gave the president the benefit of hindsight. When the president came to tell us that, look, this time around, I put my presidency on the line that I would make sure the Galamse, the Galamse menace is corrected. We trusted him. We believe the president because to the extent that he has made that promise, we understood that our lives were at stake and the president has appreciated him and you do everything to ensure that we will not die of mercury, we will not die of those dangerous chemicals. But where we've got into, the Ghana Medical Association we, we are giving us enough evidence, uh, among others, about the challenges and the one coming from Cape Coast recently. We don't need any further evidence again. In fact, if you go to River Birim, if you go to River Pra and the rest, Alfred, you share tears for us. Why? What is our offense? Our children can no longer go to school. Our children are dying. They are going into Galamse. Our children are going into uh, child labor. Those who, are, those who even come to school, they are having brain problems. Why? Why? So we are saying that we are now between death and life. And because we have chosen life, we will, take the, we will fight for our, the lives of our loved ones, the lives of our children, and... Nothing will stop us from doing that. And this time around, we have given the president that your excellency, Nanado Danko Akufuad, mm -hmm. you promised us right. and we trusted you. And we are hoping that by September ending, you will not let us down. I am we are we, we are looking up to you that by September ending, 
you will give us that hope. I, I see, but that Mr. Tango, and I want to hold beyond this and quickly, beyond this state of emergency you want the president to declare, what other measures do you expect that between now and the end of this month, 19 days away from today, uh, the president should announce, put in place to deal with this emergency situation with the legal mining we're talking about? Because the minister says he wants to engage you. We indicated that the president should establish a specific cost for Galamse. Because, you see, I have already told you, this Galamse nonsense must stop. And until we start punishing the people involved, they will take us for granted. The people involved in Galam say they are taking our collective good for granted. They are taking our very survival for granted. They are taking our very life for granted. They don't care whether we live or die. They don't care. And that is how we are. There should be a, 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 there should be a call to deal with this specific thing. And we have also said the law that gave them the mandate to be doing this thing, that law should be revoked. And we said at this particular point in time where we are, because we are between life and death. And then and but this time we are counting only minutes because at at any time in moment, people are getting cancers and all that. So we are saying that the law should be put aside and all the whether you have whether you have certificate, whether you have what permit, whatever, all mining should be put on hold. Because it is a state of emergency. So let nobody tempt us. And I repeat, for the minister, we have great respect for him. But this matter is not a ministerial matter. And I repeat, this matter is not a ministerial matter. When the president was talking, he spoke on authority, put it in his own presidency on the line. It was not a ministerial job that was put on the line. Uh, right. It was not an MP seat that was put on the line. It is a presidential job. That was put on the line. So the minister cannot can this time come and tell us what he has. As for the letter that he has written, we decline his invitation. But why is that? We decline his invitation. We will not even go there at all. We are uh, dealing with or we are engaging our own president, His Excellency. September ending, we want to hear something from him. And good news, of course. And the mm -hmm. good news is that state of emergency should be declared. The court, I see. there should be processes to put them in place. Okay. The law giving them mandate to put the mining in place should be revoked. Okay. And aside that one, all mining activities in the forest areas, among other, you know, all mining activities must should cease. also cease. And then okay. we can take it out from there. We hope these things will be granted by September ending mm. so that our country will rise again, so that our children can go to school. Africa. I am very, 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 very sad this evening. I can see that. And even my tears want to come out because of the things I went to pray to see. Mm -hmm. Because of the things I went to dream to see. Anytime I shed tears, anytime I see them. I am really shocked at the minister that he is telling us that they are giving some people to go and, to go and enforce what? At this time of the day, when the children are dying and people are dying, ah, please, uh, they should take us serious. Hmm. Alfred, my tears are coming out. I, 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 I can't I, I, help it because of I go around every day. I see how I see what the children go through. Yeah. I see what our parents go through. I see what our parents go through. And this is the time that His Excellency, the President, will show love. Uh, and uh, Mr. Dankwa, uh, 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 Musa Tanko, appreciate your time. And uh, we would, we would, look, we bear with you in this and. Um, Kindly hold back your tears, but if you have to shed tears for where we are, please do so um, with, with all the kind of emotion that uh, comes with it. But we, we thank you so much for pouring out your heart to us here on Ghana tonight. And I'm sure this resonates with a lot of people who are watching us right now. Thank you for connecting with us here on Ghana tonight. And Thomas Mosatanko is the General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT. They come face to face as well with the impact of illegal mining in all of these communities across the country.